Hey folks, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are, I hope you're well. Um, I'm full of cold as you can probably hear, uh, so I've got a really sore throat, I've got stuffy nose, so I do apologise if I sound a little bit different, um, but I do hope you're all doing well. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long, long day uh, today I'm afraid, so I'm, I'm pretty tired, so I'm, I'm drinking coffee at 8 o'clock at night when I have work at 6am in the morning, which is not a good idea, but I need it just to keep me awake and keep me going. Um, let's just see who was first. I think I know the answer to this, but it was uh, Vogon PT three hours ago. Well, three hours and two minutes ago, he uh, he put a post in chat saying first this time at five p.m. my time. It's now eight oh uh, three p.m. So yeah, and just as I was setting up the stream, guys, he he put that in there. So it was like uh, the first post. <clears throat> Since then, we've had Pingu trying to get first about thirty-five minutes ago. Uh, Dadge tried to get it, but he got third. Uh, <laughs> and then since then we have had Karcher, Tronics, uh, James is here as well. Good evening, James. Uh, Straight Class is here. Here first club. Nah, sorry guys, you were all way too late. <clears throat> uh, Max F is here. One Safe Gaming is here as well. Anarchy, the regular that is Anarchy, he's here too. Janix here as well. Um, LBI Bass is here with an eight month subscription saying sup. Yeah, sup man. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Karcher's here too, saying hi all. Pennywise, Demon uh, is here as well. So Demon, we will get into your board shortly. We'll start off with the number two. We'll finish this off from last week. I have done a second build of this because I didn't feel like Mike's choice in switches was going to be good enough for it. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, still no Okimo. No, we are working on the Okimo. Uh, Fiduta is here as well, uh, saying when it'll start. We're, we're live now. Thank you very much for joining. Rage and Asians here as well. Um, Kawabata Louie, I'm going to go with. Uh, hello there, hello as well. <coughs> uh, Diaz Walder uh, as well. Pingu's still back. Nostalgic 34, Dark Heaven. Gosh, so many people today. Jono Warren. Uh, oh, the my, yeah, finally I've got the, uh, the new My Keyboard logo. So it was quite funny because David and I were in chat talking uh, the other day about the JO2 pricing and we're hashing all of that pricing out and he's like oh I just realized on your old stream that you've still got our old logo and I'm like yeah and he's like here have the new one so finally got the new ones uh, one creative minds here as well Iluwa Rumai subscribed as well uh, for 10 months now he said feel better baby I will hopefully put it better soon and just being here with you guys makes me feel better as well uh, Ashley's here as well <clears throat> yeah, three hours before the stream, James, he was here. Three hours before the stream. Propsy, Singapore, Law Maniac. Gosh, so many people here today. Kay, Cohen's here as well. Cohen's caught a stream live, nice. Noxygen, I was last, of course. I don't think you were. I don't think you were last. Uh, Fleximan's here as well. Uh, if you guys haven't seen, go and check out Fleximan's uh, flex board. Uh, it looks really, really rather interesting. And there's a room where we might be sorting out some carbon fiber plates for that one. Uh, good call on the switches. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I do, I do want to address that actually. And uh, Rain says hello. Hi, Rain. Uh, so if you don't know, James's partner is called Rain, which is what the Rain board was named after. We are many, you are one. So just talking about the, um, the switches we've got in this board. So I'm just going to make sure I'm not doing anything, typing anywhere on the board. But this is the number two built last week, and this has got the uh, MX clears in. And They just feel and sound a little bit scratchy. Now, Mike really likes the feel of them, and I don't want to take that away from him. They are good switches if you like a tactile feel, but I don't think that they would necessarily do the board justice in some ways. Now, when we've done this previously, I've always just judged the board how I built it, and I do want to go back and revisit the SKB65 that we did a couple of weeks ago, and the main reason is because I just accepted that J-score for how we did it. So next week, I'm going to change the switches in the uh, SKB65 if I find time. If not, it'll be the week after, and uh, I'm just going to rerun that through the J-score just based on a sound perspective and everything else, because I'm slightly conscious that we didn't give it a fair review. So I do want to do that, but... Um, what I have done is I've rebuilt Mike's spare PCB and plate, uh, Jim K Modo. Uh, so this is the spare PCB and plate they had. This is built with Gatoron inks, which have been looped with 205 grade zero, and it's built with cherry stabs with uh, gold wires. I don't know if I can show you that, but they, they're cherry stabs that are in there anyway. Uh, not sure if I can get a good enough view of any. Oh, you might be able to see here just on the shift key. 
me see if I can show it. No. It's difficult to show. Oh, you might just be able to see. Just in there. There we go. Gold wire just in there. So that's all looking really rather good. It sounds pretty nice on its own. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes in a few minutes. But the plan is for me to do a bit of a typing test on this. Then I'll strip the board down. We'll do a bit of chat. I'll rebuild the board with this. And then we'll do a bit of a sound test. Then we'll do the J-score. We'll see how we feel about it. And then from there what we'll do is we'll move on to the NK65 build for Demon who is in chat. I hope you guys think that's fair enough. I hope that I'm being fair by doing that. Um, and we'll see how we get on. But yeah, that's the plan. Okay, <clears throat> um, LBI Bass says, it's been a minute since I dropped by. It has, man. It's good to see you, though. It's good to see you. Switch is in the right place this time. Shh. It would t so it turned out that I actually had the wrong size space bar, but that switch was in the wrong place. Uh, so, sorry, it's underneath the chat. So the uh, the left alt key was in the right place. It took two minutes to fix it once I had my kit to hand, but I just didn't have it to hand when... When uh, I was streaming last week, because, well, with the IDB shipments that went out this weekend, the, the whole office was just a right mess, to be honest with you, and all at the side of me on this side of the wall was just, well, there were 70 or 80 keyboard boxes there. Now there's only 20, which is the extras and a few other bits and pieces, so it's much easier to move around in the office now, because this, this room's only 4 metres by 4 metres, so it's not a huge room. Uh, so it's about 4 metres from where the camera is to the TV behind, and then it's about 4 metres on either side as well, so it's only a really tiny room. Uh, Ashley's uh, sub been subscribing as well. Uh, subscribed for nine months. He said 2020, year of the rain. Absolutely. I've got my rain somewhere about. I can't remember where I've put it, but I have got one. Uh, just waiting on a PCB now, and then I'll be able to build that on stream soon. Uh, Leandrin from Mechanisk is here as well. I said hello. Hey man, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Jay just leaked there are 20 extras for the IDB6. There's not 20 extras, there's less than that. There's 20 boxes, and some of those are extras, and some of those are other bits and pieces. Like there's a box with spare PCBs in, there's a box with a couple of spare tops, there's a box with some stuff that's just not saleable, uh, and there's also a box of stuff that I need to ship, which has got things in for Toki, it's got things in for Mr. Grinseppo, got a few other bits and pieces, and there's also the four boxes there for the steel IDBs as well, because I haven't shipped those as well yet. So, um, sorry, Janik, but there is not. There is not 20 boxes for, for that. So at least under 20 extras, yeah. I mean, I don't mind telling you how many there are. There's 14. Um, now, I believe Upass is actually going to put his up or for USA in the next couple of days. It might even be today or tomorrow or something like that. The extras that I've got here, they're going to go up on Prototypist uh, in two weeks. So not next weekend, but the weekend after. The reason for that is twofold. One, I want to make sure that everyone who's got their IDB60s going out gets them successfully and there's no issues with those. So two week window for that. And secondly, I want to make sure that I'm actually around when I put them live and all that. And next weekend, whilst I think I'll be doing a build stream on the Sunday, uh, I might be away for the Friday and the Saturday. So yeah so probably not next weekend because I need the time to sort it out so it'll be two weeks today and I'll probably launch it just as I start streaming something like that so um, yeah if you want if you want an IDB extra for the rest of the world not just for the US ones check out this stream in two weeks time and that's when I'll put it live so there we go okay <clears throat> so uh, let me just pause the music for a second or mute the music I don't even think you guys can hear that I'll turn it up so it's louder when when we come back to it but we are going to start with the J score for the number two. So, without much further ado, the first thing I'm going to do is do a bit of a typing test uh, for this particular board here. Once we've done that, I'll take the board apart, we'll switch it over, which does remind me I need to grab another keyboard so I actually have one. Sorry guys, I am so full of cold at the minute, it's, it's untrue. There we go. Look at my Rubik's Cube over. There we go. Okay, so now I can still type. <coughs> Where's the spreadsheet again? Uh, if you do J score, uh, uh, bang J score, or ex exclamation mark J score in chat, you'll be able to find it. And I'll turn it on now. Okay. So, this is where we got to last week. Um, we did the ease of build, we did the packaging, uh, and we did the first impressions. And uh, then what we're going to do today, after I've done both sound tests, is we're going to go through the home score and the work score, and then we'll look at the overall scores that we give it as well. So we'll go through the home score today. Um, so it'll be just these columns here. Oh, 
I'll prefer to scroll. So it'll just be these these columns here, and then we'll do the work score, which is these columns here. Come on, scroll. Uh, and we'll do that after we've heard both plate uh, um, compositions, uh, builds, whatever you want to call them. So as I say, we've got the MX clears. In there. Whoops, that was my uh, Rubik's cube falling over. Don't know how that fell off, but it did. There we go. Tell it to stay this time. Sorry, I do apologise, guys. I do apologise. Um, I don't know why that fell off because it was it was it was on, like on the corner. So I don't know how it managed to fall off. Oh, I know how it did. My phone vibrated and it was sat on my phone, and that's what caused it. There we go. I was scared. Cursed cube. No, it was my phone. I put it on my phone. My phone vibrated, and then of course it all fell off the unit. One of those things. One of those things. So yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do listen to the board with MX clears in. I'll then put the music back on. We'll switch over the builds, which will take a few minutes because it's quite complex to do so. Once we've switched over the build, I'll then mute the music again. We'll do a sound test based on the Gatoron inks uh, again with GMK caps and uh, and with some different stabilizers, and then we'll do the J score for both the home and the work. Okay. So uh, let me take the J score away because you don't need to see it just yet. And then there's more room for you to see when I'm typing. And again, yes, I know my typing technique's not great and all of that kind of stuff, so understood, but here we go. This is the uh, the number two with MX Clears, Lubitura 5 Grade 0, 104 on the stems, and uh, Everglide Stabilizers, that's right. So here we go. Okay, so there we go. Let's uh, let's see um, what you guys think. So I think my view on this is that, well, whilst the board sounds okay, I think the switches do let it down a little bit. They sound as feel a little bit scratchy. I know that's not a little lube job because Classy did this, and the lube job is great. But the the scratchy switches anyway, and they're going to sound this. They're going to sound a little bit off, and I don't think it gives the board a fair representation. So that's what it sounds like with MX clears. And let's take the uh, the board apart. Let's put the music back on. <clears throat> uh, and let's take the uh, the board apart. Let's change over uh, the switches, and then uh, well, the build itself almost, and then we'll see where we get to from there. Because I say I don't think that that gives it a fair representation. I'll put the right switches off to be able to see the mounting holes. So what we're looking for here is these tiny little holes. That's where we're going to take the board apart from. Need to check where the next one is. First one's there, yep. Yeah. Second one's there, yep. Yeah. Third one is there. And then the final one just up here. Too scratchy for me, says Max Surfy. I agree. Not my favourite. Yeah, sounds pretty good, other than the space bar. Yeah, the space bar just sounds too loud on this particular build. Um, and then I think if I take off the shift keys, we can see two. Come on. There. 
Man, that's tight. There we go. Okay. So let me just check and remind myself where these holes are. So we've got one just in the corner here. <coughs> and then take these out. And the reason we're doing this, guys, is just so that I can make sure that we can see all of the mount holes. I'm sure there's a few on this row. So one, two, three, and four. So now we can take the board apart. <coughs> oh, it wasn't overlooped. No, they're just uh, MX clears. So they're, they're nowhere near overlooped. Uh, they're, they're just kind of bad switches for it. Yeah, as Classy says, they're just kind of ass switches. Sounds better than I thought. Yeah, uh, it did sound better than I thought it was going to sound. How much is the key cult number two? Is it the newest key cult? It is uh, about. I think that the, there was some in a Vickery auction last week that went for two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars each. That was the same board as this. Uh, so you know the N sixty five isn't a giveaway. It was given away just before Christmas, uh, and now we're just going to uh, uh, build it for the person that won it. Okay. Uh, that's the way MX clear sound, the tactile bump causes a big part of that scratch sound. It is the way they sound, yeah, and it's, it's part of the reason why I dislike them, I'll be honest. <clears throat> space bar sounds nice, the rest sounds bad. I think the space bar sounded bad as well, to be honest with you. It sounded okay, would be how I'd put it, but I think that the ink setup's going to sound a little bit better. So we'll see what you guys think anyway when we get there. Should now allow me to remove the top half of the board and leave the base behind. There we go. And now what we can do is flip this over and then we can remove the screws that hold in the top case. Should sound great with the inks. Don't know when they're going to put the NK65 extras up. Uh, soon, I think. Soon. So I'd, I'd expect that the NK65 extras will go up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know exactly when. But I think there's there's quite a lot of extras. I don't have an exact number, but I know there's quite a lot. Acidic Pure's here as well. Hey man, good to see you. Yeah, I heard he had a turn and was trying to keep it as an in-stock type of item. I think that's pretty much it. I think he's got enough extras that they won't just sell out straight away. Okay, almost there now on these guys. There are quite a few of these. He bought 500 and the geek group buy was like 304. Yeah, he's got a couple hundred, yeah. But still, 300 boards is pretty good for a budget board. Has the bug that's been going around finally hit you? Yeah, I'm not well, man. I'm not well. Okay, so I'm just going to tip these screws out now. Should have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. That means there's 2 hiding. Nine. Where's the last one hidden? It's just in here. Okay. Let's just make sure that's going to come out. Mm, 
There we go. And we lost one of the other screws as well, just there. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Okay, then let's just take this out. So that's the first build removed. I'm just going to put the keycaps back on for safekeeping. I did the uh, the noob thing, and I was in chat with Pingu the other day when I did this, and I had the rest of Oblivion sat on the side, and I knocked the whole thing on the floor, the whole tray that was open on the floor. Is the polycarbonate board in the top left your main board, E65 or T6.5? It's an E6.5. It's not my main board, but I use it a fair bit. Um, I use it pretty regularly. It is a really nice board to use. It's just a really good daily driver, to be honest. It's not something that's so expensive I worry about damaging it and therefore only bring it out for special occasions. And it's not something that's so... Uh, cheapest to be unusable, it's kind of in the middle. Uh, it's just a really nice daily driver board, uh, it works really well for me. Okay. Okay, there we go, that's all those put back on there, so we're just going to pop that build to one side now. And I'll send that to uh, to Mike when I ship the board back to him. Um, is E6.5 polycarb plate and weight? Uh, so it is a polycarbonate plate. The, uh, the weight on the base of this is kind of uh, aluminium. And then it's got some anodized brass parts here in the red and the black. There we go. Munster magic lock time, loco time. Yeah, right? <clears throat> Gosh, I'm so struggling, guys. Um, I'm itching to build a new board. Yes, uh, I always like to build new boards as well. Let's just pop these screws back in. And then we'll rebuild the board, this time using the new setup. Okay. This is where I had one of the big problems with this, is trying to keep the uh, keep this wire in this groove. So the wire is supposed to sit in that groove, but it pops out very, very easily. Seems like the easiest way to do it is to do it like that and then slide it back into position. Okay, I'm gonna take the top case. Slide that over. And then I'm gonna pressure all that into position and then whilst it's held like this I'm just going to uh, try and screw this back together in two corners Help if I could see So fiddly to build, yeah. Two thousand dollars, and it takes uh, it's uh, it takes nine hands to, to build it. But it's just one of those things, guys. You you're paying for the quality, not necessarily for how easy it is to build. And we did give it a pretty poor build score because of this and how difficult it is to put together. Isn't USB usually on the PS, PS, PCB? It is, yeah. So the, the wires for the door to board to connect it to the, the main board. Now we've got two in. I'm confident we can turn it over and uh, put the rest in. Uh, and what it does is effectively it means that you can move the USB socket from 
for, there's a number of reasons to do it. The, the main reason for me is that when you've got a, a, a PCB in a board, and if you turn the board on its edge, so if you look at it like this on, it, on, it, on its edge, the, uh, the plate isn't flat, the plate's at an angle, so you've got your typing angle, so you'd be typing like this. And what that means, it means that the USB comes out at that angle, so it doesn't necessarily... Let's, let's, let's show you. So, if I had the... You can see here that's the flat edge where it sits on the desk. You can see here this is the typing angle of the board. If I had the USB just coming straight out of the back in this corner here, for example, you'd see how the cable comes out, and effectively if it was a straight rod it would get further and further away from the, the, the base of the table edge, it would just grow exponentially. So what you can do, what one reason for using a daughter board is, is that you can then actually mount the uh, the USB port lower down. So for example on this board, I've mounted the USB port here, so you can see that there. Whereas if it was on the actual PCB, it would come out here somewhere in the middle of the brass. So it just means that you've got more control over it, and that means that on this particular board, it's hidden underneath this lip and all of that kind of good stuff as well. So there's lots of reasons to do it. The main reason for me is to keep the cable as low to the desk and not have it sticking out at an angle. Other reasons are for aesthetics, to make sure that you can put the, uh, the USB port where you want. Um, it means it's only one part has to fail, you don't have both parts to fail. So if your daughter board fails, for example, you don't have to change your whole PCB out, you just have to change the daughter board. Lots and lots of reasons for doing it. Just finished my E-White E7V1SE and put on Taro. This board is nice, nice man. The difficulty doesn't necessarily detract from the overall experience. That's true, that's true. Hold on, if I put two screws on that side. I love daughter boards for that reason above all. It gives you so much more freedom of the case design too. It does, yes. I'm just thinking from a practical perspective. In terms of design, it gives you more freedom, indeed. Okay. <laughs> Preferred tightening order today is any damn way that Jay wants to because he feels like shit. I do not feel my best today, guys, I'll be honest. I think what I've done is I've dropped a second screw down that hole because it won't tighten, so I think I've just dropped it on top of the other one. Let me just see if that's the case. Hmm. Yes, it is the case. There we go. Got some there. Okay. When you're designing prototyping a new board, do you 3D print early versions before making a metal version? So what I usually do, and what I did for... So I don't tend to do my own CAD work because I'm terrible at it, but what I did when uh, AKB James, who is my go-to CAD man at the minute, and always will be as far as I'm concerned, I tend to 3D print out like a 25% um, scale version so I can see how the design is going to work and how it's going to fit together and stuff like that. Um, I've got a few of those lying around that I don't have any within reach, but I tend to do that first, but I wouldn't print it full size just go straight for the manufacturing because you learn more in the metal than you do or in the final material than you do in any other medium and yeah I just prefer to do it that way it's nice to just get a nice box okay so the next thing we're gonna do now is we're just gonna flip the board over we're gonna put it on the brass base uh, and then we're gonna tighten up the screws we'll have to remove some of the keycaps to be able to do that Very interesting that there's certain machine marks on here that I've not noticed before so, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's actually grooves milled into this here. That's quite clever. Interesting. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to pop it on. Okay, I'm going to take off the keycaps across the top again and then we can screw those internal screws down and then we'll take this one for a road test as well and then we'll move on to the NK65 bill for Demon who I believe is in chat and I hope he is because uh, I'd like to see his thoughts when we build the board
He's here. He's here. Awesome. Okay, so now we're just going to tighten up those screws. What we are going to do, if I find my... Uh... Where the hell have I put that? Here it is. <coughs> Don't know how much to put the box on it. Uh, the sky is 256k. Uh, thank you very much for the five months of subs. Uh, hey Jay, any thoughts on ISO kits? Um, yeah, a few. Uh, ISO is difficult to... It's a difficult topic to discuss, to be honest, because I can see why designers choose to not include it some of the time. Um, that being said, I'm a big, big ISO fan, so I would always rather have it than not, but I can completely understand why um, some people don't. If I ever do any GMK kits, they will always include ISO in the base. That's just because I'd use it and I wouldn't sell something that I wouldn't want to use myself. Built an ISO clip, uh, Clipper S today. Nice. Um, I really want to see the Clipper S, so uh, yeah. I um, need to see some pictures, uh, Leandrin. Send some pictures. I'm just going to double check, make sure all of these are not too tight, but comfortably tight, so it's going to hold that big piece of brass in place. Because it's a solid lump of brass, I want to make sure that everything is looking good. Okay, there we go. So let's put the keys back on. Uh, Janik said ISO is just four keys. It is for ISO compatibility, yes. Uh, oh, wrong, wrong way, wrong position. So to get physical coverage, it's uh, two here, it's the ISO enter and then the key that goes at the side of it. But if you want full UK ISO, for example, there's a little bit more to it than that. Okay, so there we go. That is the board now rebuilt with the revised PCB and plates. This is Gator and Inks. I've got to be honest, I think Modern Dolch looks better on this than um, Oblivion did. This looks pretty classy. All a big piece of brass. And the key cut logo on the base. I think this looks really nice. So those guys who voted for uh, Oblivion last week, Sorry guys, you were wrong. Uh, this is the right key set for this board. <laughs> okay, let us uh, let me take a drink, catch up with chat for a minute. Yeah, so thank you again for 256k for the five months of, of uh, subs. Uh, I just ordered the Sirius after your top pack episode the other day. Uh, really looking forward to that. Yeah, the Sirius is nice. I've got one up on the wall. I haven't used it for a while. It's just up, just up there. You can't quite see it. It's just out of view there, but it's got ham on, on it at the moment. I really like it. It's nice. Yeah. Even if, um, um, well, the best thing I can say about any keycut board, irrespective of sound, feel, anything else, they all look good. And there's just the subtle details on this board that I really like. So, this edge here, you can see there's kind of like a line here. Now, this is so subtle. Like, if I show you edge on, you can barely see where that is, like uh, where the hip line is. But it's there when you can see the difference in the light and you can see how that light portrays off it so you can see very much that there is uh, a line there uh, that runs down here now that runs all down the front as well and then up the other side and you can see it better on the front but it's just so nice it's just little details like that that really make boards like this stand out so yeah really really impressive with it need more tkl customs there are so many tkl customs so many tkls the price on this board is insane, but honestly one of the most beautiful keyboards I've ever seen. The way it goes together is so clever that it's just unbelievable. The subtle details as well that I mentioned before. So there's a little uh, chamfer just on all of these internal edges. It's really hard to show you guys. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if you look in the corners, there's just these internal chamfers that are just super, super detailed and super, super nice. So yeah. Yeah, uh, Leandro, I'm waiting for mine to come, so I paid for mine a couple of weeks ago. Hopefully it'll be here at some point soon. I'm dead excited to build my personal one as well. The Rolex of keyboards, yeah. 
Um, I'm not going to say it's the best keyboard because I think that's really subjective, um, and I, it probably isn't the key, my perfect keyboard. I just want them because I think a the uh, the epitome of what's seen in the keyboard world, and b I think they look great. So I, I can't wait for mine to come in, but uh, it will be a few months away. All that. When you have a premium board, you can afford all the nicer machining that less premium boards cannot afford to do. It's very true. Yeah, it's very true. Anarchy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, I mean it scales down in terms of price and quality, and you can get you can get really good solid boards now for a couple of hundred dollars. Um, you know, uh, Leandrin's here, the, uh, the the Fjell, the Type X, they're both really really solid boards. So, you know, and they're great prices. If you want to go a little bit cheaper than that, you can go to KBD Fans and get something that's improving all the time in quality as well. Um, you know, Zondat produces some great cases and things like that too. We've seen loads of loads of good stuff. Exclusives boards, they're great in that middle price range. And then you've got stuff that comes up at the top end of the price ranges as well, like this. Um, you know, so it's all, it's all, it swings and roundabouts. It's different strokes for different folks. It all depends on how big your pocketbook is, how much you want to spend on a hobby, and how much you enjoy the hobby. But either way, there's something for every price point. So, and uh, this is just a thing of beauty, irrespective of how it sounds or feels to type on. Pingu said, any $135 board available? Shh, the extras won't be that cheap. Shh. <laughs> Polaris apparently is going to be the best affordable board since quite a while. Can't wait to get mine. Yeah, I got a green Polaris. I bought a green one, so I'm waiting for that to come in. Uh, equals D says, I got lucky and got one in the raffle the other day. Nicest board I've ever used by far. Nice, man. Congratulations. Okay, so let's... Uh, <clears throat> Let's pause the music. Let's see how this sounds. So this is a build with Gator on inks, lived with 205 grade 0 and 104 on the stems. Uh, it's also got uh, GMK stabilizers in this. These are old GMK stabilizers. These aren't the new retooled ones. So let me know how you think this sounds. Okay, so um, first things first, it sounds a lot better. I think the mods sound great. There's no rattle or anything, it's not the stabilizers, any noise you get is the, the, the plate. Uh, it sounds like a lot of other ink boards with brass plates, if I'm honest. I think the space bar is probably the worst part about the build. It's not rattly. It's still smooth, it feels fine. Um, I think the problem is the plate's just too solid and it just sounds so different that the plate's reverberating a lot. So I think I mean, the, key, the key's on there. Um, again, type of feels still, feels good, looks good. But as I say, I think this is much a marked improvement over the previous build that had the Cherry MX players, and I'm sure you guys will agree as well. So, <clears throat> is it me or does the shift row sound a little deeper than the rows above? Uh, it does. And I think that's just due to the design of the keyboard inside. There is very, very little room in here. And most keyboards don't have two pieces underneath them. Uh, the most, pieces, most keyboards have a single base piece. What this has got effectively is it's got uh, a base in there, and then on top of that you've got the chassis, and then on top of that you've got the, the PCB and plate construction. So um, I don't think it sounds bad by any means. I think it sounds good. Uh, I agree with James there. I think it sounds fine. I think it definitely sounds better. 
than the other build, so I hope Mike's appre Mike appreciates me donating him the switches and stabilizers and time to do this build as well because I think this sounds much better and gives the board more justice. Okay, so with that in mind, we can now go through the rest of the J score and we can get this board up to date. So reminder, just where we got to last week, guys, we did do the build score for this, so we did these boxes here, but we didn't go any further. So I've updated this and said so we've got MX clears and Gator on inks. Uh, the $900 price tag was the group buy price last time it was up. I know they have sold for more than that now, so please do bear that in mind as we go through the rest of the J score. Just as a bit of a reminder as well, for the ease of build, I gave it a 5. It's not difficult, but it's not the easiest. Uh, the community gave it a 5.5. For packaging, we both gave it a 10, which is pretty good going. And then for first impressions, I gave it a 10, and the community gave it a 9.5. There was a few people who had probably either seen them before or didn't think it had rated that highly or wanted room to go higher in the future, if that's the case. Uh, Wiz Blues here says, from the view, it doesn't sound like anything particular. Shrugs, as always, with number two builds. Absolutely, yeah, it just sounds okay. Yeah, it sounds fine. Um, but that's just one of those things. Uh, in terms of uh, the rest of the J score, we're now going to jump onto the home score. So how this works, guys, if you haven't been here before while we've done this, is basically now you guys have got one minute to input your thoughts on a score. The scores are from zero uh, if it's terrible, ten if it's good. Ten is always the better score on this. You guys now need to give me a, a score out of ten uh, for value. So if this board, you manage to pick one up for $900, forget the aftermarket or anything else, forget paying Victory auction prices. In the group buy, this was $900. If you bought one for nine hundred dollars do you think that's good value for money ten if it's excellent value for money one if it's not good value for money uh, the timestamp is 43 if you guys go and give me a, what you think in terms of a value I'll give you guys a couple of seconds have a drink and then I'll uh, then I'll give my thoughts on it <clears throat> okay so the first thing I'm going to say while you guys are coming up with a score is I've bought one of these. So that probably does lead me to be a little bit biased. Now it's going to be a little while before it gets here. It's probably going to be three or four months minimum before I see my board. Um, but in terms of value, I don't think it's particularly good value for money. It's a lot of keyboard for a lot of money. But I don't think that that's, for the majority of pockets, going to work. So, for my view on this, I'm going to give it quite a low score for this one. Not because I think it's bad, not because I think the pricing's wrong, not because I think that the uh, the Vickery auction shouldn't happen or anything like that. But when you look at bang for buck, which is how I term value, we're into the point of diminishing returns on anything over $600, is my view. And to spend another $300 on top of that doesn't give you enough extra bang for buck. So I'm going to give this a 4. Okay, let's uh, let's just see where you guys come up with if you stop there on this one, <clears throat> and I'll uh, I'll go through. Uh, so uh, McBerto starts with an eight, that's quite high. Couple of fours, seven, six, five, seven. Okay, so you're probably averaging about six there. Uh, seven from Geo, eight from Adrian Kuick. Um, I can't deny I want through a classy HHB inside side profile and cell design. Yes, the side profile and the looks of this is different we'll, we'll get on to that when we get to it Wiz but uh, yeah I completely agree uh, seven six six four four five five so you guys are probably still somewhere around the five six mark here six probably closer uh, 900 is a fairy tale price it's the group buy price so if I judge everything on aftermarket prices it's not fair I have to go by the group buy price that's the only way I can do it fairly uh, seven steps ten because you can flip it I did say not if it, on the aftermarket I said ignore the aftermarket uh, containment unit says 10, I entered the raffle, can't shot myself now. That's fair, but I bought one and I don't think it's a particularly high score. Okay, so I think you guys were a little bit higher than me. Uh, I think overall, because there's a couple of 3s, a couple of 8s, a couple of 5s, mostly with 6s up there. I'm going to ignore the 10s because that's just people uh, wanting flip price and things. I think realistically you guys are probably in the region of about a 6 overall. Okay, so... <clears throat> Anarchy says you could have two almost as good boards that could sound feel better than the one. That's true, maybe. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, I'd rather have a Jane for around that price if uh, in a one-off group buy. Um, yeah, I think the Jane. I think my Jane CE was five hundred dollars plus seventy dollars shipping. Uh, it's not here yet, but I think that's what it cost me. Um, four for me was gener generous, honestly, just for that brass plate. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so we've done that one, guys. We've we've come up with a score there. Now we're going to go on to style. So, 
In terms of style, we're looking at time system, so 46 now, so 46 minutes past the hour, wherever you are. If you pop uh, your vote for the styling of this board, how good is the styling? So score out of 10, uh, 10 is a perfect score, um, you know, you can give it one if you dislike the styling. Uh, but here we go, I'll just show, just show some angles of the board for a second whilst you guys make up your minds on that. Look at that brass, the brass base as well with the key cult logo. Okay, so I've got to be honest, I think this is the nicest looking TKL that's on the market at the minute, if I'm completely honest. The subtlety in the uh, HHKB sides that Wiz Blue was talking about earlier is just so nice and it feels so good to touch. It just draws your hand into the board. The same at the front, when you get your hands on the front, it just feels really nice. I'm going to give this a really, really good score of 9.5 for me. The styling is spot on. It looks great, it feels great. Wing Keyless is my favourite layout. There's no logos, there's nothing else to detract you from it. The bezels are nice and even across the top. The bezels on the side mirror the bezels that go through uh, the uh, the TKL construction just really really nice board okay so let's see what you guys came up about uh, AKB Jim said 8 Steeman said 9 another 8 and another 9 so that's an 8.5 there 9 from Talisman a couple more 8s another 9 from Equals Wiz Blue says 9 as well Adrian Kuick says 10 a couple of 8s from Vogon and McBurto 8.5, another 10 there, a couple of 7s, 9.5. TKLs aren't for me, but let's face it, this is classy as hell. That's how I feel, because I don't really have many TKLs. I've got the Vern, I've got this. I've got the Jer J80, that's about it. And I've, oh, I've got a Jane, which I've never built. I've got the Jane CE coming. Um, yeah, so, I've got a few. Okay, stop there then on the scores, guys. Let's uh, let's see where we get to. I think you guys are a little bit lower than me, because there's a lot of 7s, there's a lot of 9s. There's a few 8s in there. Uh, second only to the J80, the the, the Jer J80. I can't wait till we just score that because it's one of my favourite boards. Uh, Cohen, yes, I'm still talking about this keyboard. <laughs> the Jane is just a better buy over this. I, I'm not sure I'd agree with that necessarily. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that. So I think you guys are a little bit lower than me. I think you guys are actually closer to an 8.5 overall. Uh, the sevens and everything else dropped that down. There's been a couple of tens and mostly nines and eights. So I think 8.5 is pretty close for that. Let's move on to the quality score now, guys. So we're looking for a timestamp of 49. How do you think the quality? You've seen me take this apart last week and build it. You've seen me take it apart this week and put it back together to change the construction. What do you think in terms of the quality? Bear in mind, we've got that lovely brass base. We've got the internal chassis, which both top cases connect to through a really unique uh, mechanism. Um, it's got the, uh, the, the the wingtips on the plate to give it kind of a bouncier feel. It's almost like um, like Wilbur's design for the thermal in terms of spring leaf mount. So it's very similar to that. So in terms of quality, the finish is extremely good. I can only just tell you how soft the anodization is. Uh, the fillets, the chamfers, everything else is spot on. Um, the brass is in impeccable condition. I've never ever uh, had a board come with such a huge piece of brass that was so nice. I've got to be honest, it is just, it's perfect, is, is the only way to describe it. So with that, with that for quality, I'm going to give it a 10. It, nothing has beaten this in terms of quality that I've seen. Okay, stop there, guys. Let me add up your scores. So looking for scores on 49 or afterwards. So Tronics was first. 10, 10, 10, 10. Oh my god, 10, 10, 10. 9.5, 10, 10, 9. 9.5. The pleated vest beans is 9.99 recurring. Uh, 10, 10, 9.69. Got to get a 69 in there, I see. Uh, a couple more 10s. Okay, so I think you guys overall are averaging on a 10. I won't ever go to like 0.7 scores and stuff like that. It's only going to be on the number or half. Um, so I think you guys are pretty close up there with a 10 as well. Uh, if we added all those up, I think it'd be closer to a 10 than a 9.5. Uh, you want me to weigh it? I think we weighed it last week. I can't recall. Let me grab my scales and we can do just that. In fact, let's get the music back on. There we go. <clears throat> okay, let me turn these on. Okay, so this is in pounds and ounces first. So this is eight pounds, 12.6 ounces. And in grams, that's just shy of four kilograms. So 3.986 kilograms, that's just shy of four kilograms. So it's a pretty weighty board. It's not light by any means. <clears throat> okay. 
good travel board. Well, we'll get onto scores for things like that shortly. Yeah, it's just about four kilograms. It's just under four kilograms, the police vest beam. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the typing sound. So you've heard two typing sounds today, guys. You've heard the MX clears and you've heard the inks in the board. I do think the inks do the board more justice. I don't think the MX clears do any board justice from a sound perspective, irrespective of whether you like the feel or not. For me, I think this is pretty meh in comp compared to other boards in terms of sound. Like when I compare it to other boards, it just sounds a bit flat and a bit dull and I think that's partly just because the construction's so solid. Um, I think for me I'm going to give it a 6 from a sound perspective. Pixel Hero, thank you very much for the 12 months of subs, 12 month streak, thank you very much, a whole year, thank you. <clears throat> so go on guys, give it your score for, uh, for, for sound, typing sound. Imagine a battleship being made like this. Maybe we should do a Hyper 7 one. Maybe we should speak to the uh, uh, the guys here and we'll do that. You can sell me your Jane after you've received your number two. Maybe, Cohen. Maybe I'll sell you the original Jane when I get the CE and the number two in. Maybe. Uh, you do have dibs on it. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's stop you guys there and see what you come up with. So, Tronic started us off with a 7. Demon said 6.5, 6, 7, 7.5, a 4 there from Wiz. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it sounds particularly good. It's pretty average. There are boards that sound a lot worse. A couple more 5s and 6s. I think your guys' scores are a little bit higher than mine just because there's a couple of 7s in there and there's a lot of 6.5s. So I think from your guys' perspective, I think 6.5 is probably about the right number. I need to write the bot to, uh, to do this automatically. Didn't re-listen to the typing test. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Sounds close to my five degree, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. You should let Quakeums review the JO2. Um, yeah, so I'm never going to J-score my boards because I think like, that's unfair. What we might do is we might just do a community score and I'll just keep stum and we'll do it that way. Maybe when I've got more than one prototype, we'll send uh, a JO2 to Quakeums. Okay, so next up then guys, we've got typing feel. So we always take this that you're just going to take my word for it on this one because you guys can't feel it here. Um, I think it feels nice. The leaf spring type uh, implementation on the plate gives it a softer bottom out. There's a little bit of flexibility there, but not too much. It tends to prefer a firm typing feel, at least with a brass plate, which fits my typing experience. I think a solid 6.5 or a 7 is probably right. Let's err on the side of caution and go for a 7. Okay, now we're up to innovation, guys. So, in terms of innovation, what we're talking about here is, is there anything new, anything we haven't seen before? Is there anything that uh, stands out above the crowd? Is there any innovation in this board? So, from that perspective, guys, 54 is a timestamp. You give me some numbers now in terms of how innovative this board is. Whilst you're doing that, some things to think about is the fact that it's completely screwless design from the outside. You cannot see any screws. It was the first board to do that in the community from the outside, apart from tray mount boards. Um, the way that the chassis connects both the top part and the second part is, to me, it's very, very new. We haven't seen anything like that remotely. Um, you know, some boards have had brass middles like the JO2 and things like that, but they don't act as a chassis. They're just a, an accent piece that bolt into the middle of the board. So something like this, especially when the chassis is completely hidden, is quite interesting. Um, there's all sorts of other things like the guide rails on the base where we had the horizontal and vertical lines to guide the two together. That's again, it's extra machine time, but it allows better alignment. Uh, use of a daughter board and things. That isn't so new now, we see that on a lot of boards, so I think that's fairly fine. Um, I think from my perspective, from an innovation point of view, just given what we've given some of the boards, like the Equinox and things like that, I think I'm going to give this one a 9 just because it's so different and it's just it's a completely different build experience. It's not like building a normal board except for the soldering and the switches. Everything else is different about this board, so I'm going to go from there. <clears throat> Let's see what you guys came up with for scores on this one. So 7 Steps started off with a 9. Wizblue said 9 as well. Demon Has said 9. Bigfoot said 8. So we're looking like a nine here. A couple more nines. The back brass is pretty pog. Eight, yep. New three tier construction. New take on seamless builds. 8.5. Agree, yeah, seamless as well. Yeah, I didn't mention that. It's beautiful considering it has all those extra keys, yeah. <laughs> um, it's. Where do we get to? Tofu. Oh, we're talking about uh, helping someone else out there. We'll come to that in a bit. Um, so yeah, okay, so 8, construction is awesome, 9 and 9, so I think you guys are probably a little bit lower overall than me at an 8.5, but it's still pretty close. 
Now we're finally going to move on to the last one in the home score, which is cool factor. So, if you came to a friend's house and you saw that they'd got a number two on the desk, would you think they were cool? Scores out of ten at the doors with a 56 timestamp, please, guys. Tell me, if you think someone's got a key cut on the desk, does that make them cool? Is this board going to make you feel cool? Do you really like this? Um, let me know what you think. I think it means that someone's a giant nerd, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're uncool. I've got one coming, so I'm insulting myself here, guys. Please don't take it as an insult if you've got one. Um, I genuinely think that this cool factor is probably relatively high. It is a really cool board, but you know, at the end of the day, it's not something that's going to be for everyone. I'm going to give it an 8. Okay, I'll give you guys another 10 seconds or so to get some numbers in there. Okay. Okay, stop there then guys, let's see what you guys have come up with. Uh, so Tronic says 11, uh, uh, Elgo NA says 10, <laughs> Sky is 256K says 13. Okay, so I'm going to count those all as 10s. Uh, Flippinter says 9, Bigfoot says 9, Tenstrong says 9.5, couple more 10s, 9 from Geo, 9 from Karcher, and Krasio gives it an 8. Okay, Wiz says 5, it's uncool if you can't lift it. I mean, it's it's close to unliftable. I mean, the, the that's that kind of bezel that we saw on the edges that does help actually to to lift it up. Nine, but ten for the mirror black. Fair enough. Uh, eight, fifteen minutes of fame. Uh, the look rich, not cool. Uh, that's an interesting take on it. Yeah, seven point five, eight point five. Instant friend, eight nine. If it was the same board but not key cult, they wouldn't be as cool. Good point, and a key good point. People should bear that in mind. Uh, holy shit, it's Chris. Subscribe for five months. Thank you very much, dude. It's cool just because you managed to get one. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so I think you guys are a little bit lower than me on that, so I'm going to put you guys down for a seven. So that does the home score. We're now going to quickly run through the work score. First of all, practicality. Is this at four kilograms something that you could take to work? Is it something that would make a good work board from that perspective? Could you get it out on the train, for example? Would you want to carry it based on the fact that it's $900 minimum? You know, what are your scores on this one? For me, I'm really, really sorry because I love Riot and I love George, but for me, practicality, this is going to get the lowest score. I could not take this to work. It's too heavy. I couldn't put it in my bag and carry it around on my back all day. I, I would be terrified of damaging it and scratching it. Um, I would be terrified that someone would spill something on it. So from a practicality perspective, I couldn't get it out on the train. I couldn't use it with my iPad or anything like that. I'm going to give it a one just because it's not practical for work. That's not, uh, you know, any reflection on the board itself or anything like that. It's just one of those facts. The heavier a board is, the less practical it can be at times. And practicality is all about being able to move. That's why the Equinox, for example, got a really good score. Um, uh, and some other boards got some good scores. Sorry, not the Equinox, what we're looking at here. The Unicorn got a good score and the Canoe got a good score. So, there we go. Okay, so that being said, let's uh, see what you guys came up with. Um... Uh, Classy says 10, okay, interesting. Uh, 10 strong says 2, 7 steps says 0 and 0. I'm going to count them as 1s because they're the lowest scores we can do. A uh, couple of 1s are 4, 3 just because it's a TKL. 4, 2, another 1, minus 2, 1, 5. Okay, interesting ways that you could take this to to, uh, to work with you. We could leave it at work in a private office, sure. Not everyone has a private office, I mean, you know, it's not always possible. Wouldn't carry it anywhere, we'll keep it in one place as a daily driver. Who lugs a TKL around? True. Okay, so I think you guys are pretty close to me. There's a couple of twos and threes. I'm going to give you guys a 1.5 overall because there's a couple of higher scores. Uh, big flex for the corner office. It's only big flex if anyone knows what it is though, right? So we go from 1.5. Um, office acceptance. If you did manage to get this into the office, you managed to carry it into the office, you got it there, you got it on your desk, how noticeable is this going to be? If this board was on your desk at the office, is anyone going to notice anything out of the ordinary? Or are they just going to assume you're going to blend in? Uh, does it just feel like it's going to be another part of the office, irrespective of whether people pick it up? For me, I think this board, whilst it looks absolutely stunning, especially with Mono on it, I think that really fits this really well. You know, no one can see the brass and unless they know what it is, unless they try and pick it up or move it, I think it's going to fit into the office just fine. It's not too obnoxious as well when we come to noise level, but we'll talk about it in a second. But I think this is pretty good. I'm going to give it a 7, uh, pretty much in line with uh, with the canoe. Okay. <clears throat> i give you guys another 5 or 6 seconds because I need to open another drink. There we go. 
Okay, stop right there, guys, then, and let's see what you guys come up with for the Officer Captain score. <clears throat> uh, it's been all and the sound is quite flat, probably sit at the office. We'll do the volume shortly, so that's fine. Uh, with those caps, 10. Yeah, I think the caps will make a big difference to this one. Uh, Grey and Minimalistic, 10. 9 and 8 from 10 strong ones to save gaming. Max Surface says it's a 3. Okay, Max Surface doesn't think this is good for the office. Interesting. I imagine someone trying to snag it behind my back and I turn around and hear the desk slipping in there. <laughs> yeah, right. Unless you change the key set, it will blend in just fine. Absolutely. Very classy, subtle design. Doesn't draw attention unless you know what you're looking for. Absolutely. Well, we'll come on to uh, to volume soon, seven steps. So I'll ignore that for now. We're more noticeable with bright caps and whatnot. Yeah, okay. So just looking through the scores here, I think you guys are broadly in line with me. There's a couple of high scores, but there's a couple of low scores as well. Uh, a four from the sky is for uh, 256k, nine from Wiz Blue, and an eight from Tronics. So I think you guys are probably broadly in line with where I am. I think maybe a little bit higher, so we put down 7.5 from that perspective. Okay, and then the final score, guys, uh, we're looking for a timestamp of 9 or 2 or after. Uh, we're looking for the volume at the noise level. So I'm talking now, is this distracting you from hearing what I'm saying? Can you hear me over the sound of it? Um, is it too loud? You know, is it, is it going to cause you any problems hearing me or anything like that? Or are you just going to be fine with it? I think that the so so and what we're talking about here is it, if it's acceptable, so it's fairly quiet, you want a high score, and if it's too loud, you want a low score. Bear that in mind, the guys. I think this is right in the middle. I think for me, this is a five. I think it would fit fine in any office. It's not going to draw too much to it. Um, yeah, but it's just going to sound nice overall. Uh, Socialite, thank you very much for converting your Twitch Prime sub to a tier one sub. I hugely, hugely thank you for that. Thank you very much. It's quite balanced, a bit pitchy, six. Okay, so let's see what scores we've got. Uh, an eight, a three, and an eight. Interesting that the rocket ends. A six, a seven, a four, and a six. Remember, the higher the score, the better. The high scores are good, low scores are bad. Uh, five, six, five, four, four. Uh, it's distracting from wanting one. Fair enough. Seven, eight, seven, four. Uh, neither quiet enough nor loud enough. Okay, so it's right in the middle for you. Interesting. Um, okay, it's four, seven, and five. Okay, so let's stop it there, guys. I think over overall, you guys are a little bit higher than me. I think you're probably close to a six rounded off our roll. There's a lot of sevens in there, a lot of sixes, a lot of fives, and a lot of fours. So let's go for a six from that perspective. I like clicky switches. Oh man, turn the stream off, go home. <laughs> Joking, I'm kidding. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to switches and stuff. So let's see where that puts us then, guys. So that does put us uh, in a, a B. Okay, so I don't know where my my canoe PC has uh, has gone for my hot take on that, but I'll I'll dig that out. Uh, Brass key cut number two. It gets both a B from a, a J score and a B from a community score with a 70 and 72 percent respectively. So I think the big things that let it down here when we look back over the scores if my scroll wheel decides to work, uh, are the practicality that really, really hurt the board's scores there, um, and also the ease of build as well. Those are the two big impacts, I think, on this board. So it's a little bit fiddly to build, uh, and uh, it doesn't necessarily sound quite as good as it could do, and also it's just not practical for you to carry around. It's a stay-at-home board from that perspective. Talisman Solution, thank you very much for gifting that sub to Wizblue. That's really, really nice of you. 221 subs now gifted in the channel. Thank you. Okay, guys, so my hot take on the uh, number two is it's beautiful, but it's fucking expensive. So there we go, guys. Uh, and that takes us down to the J score for this week. So let's uh, remove that from view. And then we're going to carry on with the rest of the stream. So that's the number two, guys. I'm going to pop that to one side. Just give me one second so I don't put this somewhere where it's going to get damaged. Okay, now for the rest of the stream, we are going to be building Demon's uh, NK65. So for those that you don't remember, I gave a NK65 away on stream just before Christmas. Demon was the winner. He asked me to build it with uh, with Silent Inks, and then we'll get it shipped out to him towards the end of this week. So I have a bag full of Silent Inks. He wanted them stock, completely unchanged, unmoved, so he can do with him as he will. And then we'll unbox the board in a second. Let's just catch up with chat and see what you're talking about. Uh, C Madrid says, My wife saw me looking at Model M's a few years ago and was like, Oh, those things suck. We threw away a ton of those at work a few months ago. Wow. Zykos aren't real. They are, and they're pretty good. I've tried them. Uh, I collected the unwanted M's at a previous workspace. Nice. 
Uh, Krasios says, do you have any inside info on the doppelganger? I have two bits of inside info on the doppelganger. One, it was made by Max and designed, and well, designed by Max and uh, and Noah collaboratively in Noah's commission. And two, it's incredibly good. I really like that board, and I can't wait for it to come out. That's all the inside knowledge I have. Uh, bashes a dent into his floor. Yeah, well, I've put it down somewhere nice and safe, so it's not going to get damaged. You said before that you were tactile user and switched to linear. Care to share what made you switch? So. I used to use tactiles pretty much exclusively a couple of years ago, and what really made me switch was the fact that I didn't realise how good switches could be once they were lubed, and what really woke me up to good linears was understanding how lubing works. So previously my experience of lube switches was just what I'd tried at a meetup, and that's not necessarily conducive to being able to understand how they actually feel in real world usage, because it's kind of a one-off environment. And it was only once I bought a, a board and had it built by someone else and who lubed the switches for me that made me really understand how lubed switches could change the feel. And that's when I started to lube my own switches. And I even tried to lube tactiles for a while. And I still do when I use them. Uh, so I'm still a big, big fan of uh, Xenos V2, for example. And I'm still a Holy Panda fan as well. And that kind of really drew me to what can make a good linear and I don't like a linear that's scratchy but as soon as I feel a smooth buttery linear that's not over looped and still has a good sound to it then I, I was just kind of hooked from that point onwards and from there I started looping my own switches and my build probably went from being 90% tactile and 10% uh, linear to probably about 60% linear and 40% tactile which is pretty much how it stays now. Um, that being said, I think I'm going to move more and more away from tactile switches uh, as the year progresses, so I think 2020 might be the last time I build a tactile board, sadly, but there we go. Okay. Um, ever built something with Zykos? No, I haven't built something with Zykos, but I have tried them out. I've got a couple of the switches lying around here. I think they're really good. Uh, well done for Mechs on Decks for finding them, or creating them. Uh, 256k says, what would you recommend as a tactile exclusive user to try for linears? Um, I would recommend inks. So if you're a tactile user today and you want to try something new, try some really good lubed Gatoron ink because they're pretty good. Uh, if you want to go for budget, the best thing you can get bang for budget, Gatoron Blacks, Milky Tops. These switches are one of the cheapest on the market and they're also one of the best. Any recall of Gatoron, gonna feel like this. So you, before you try your Linyars, you know, before you try uh, your Tangerine V1s, try these because this will tell you whether you like them or not. So, And it won't break the bank either. They're dead cheap. Grazio says, am I going to the Stockholm meetup in February? Uh, no, but I'll try. I'm not booked on anything at the moment, but I can certainly try. <clears throat> You can use them if you want. Top back. No, you can have the side links. You pick. <clears throat> okay. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, this is how the NK65 come, comes in a box, and then it comes in a bag as well, which is kind of nice. These are lovely, and I'm hoping that I can get some of these. Maybe, maybe I should do these as a freebie for the JO2. Upas, if you're watching, what do you think? Should we do a case for the JO2? No extra cost. Just chuck them in for people. Would that be good? Would people like that if I chipped one of these in? If you opened up your JO2 and got one of these, instead of just getting it in a box with a bit of bubble wrap, is that a good idea? Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Okay, so, there we go. If you're going to buy a JO2, you're going to get a hard case with it. There we go. Decided. <clears throat> um, okay. So Invia Stem on Gatoron Black Milky Top. Yeah, the Invia Stems are actually quite nice. The, uh, the UHM ones are actually quite good. JO2, Wisp Blue, JO2, nice man, I didn't know you were going to buy a JO2, but thank you. Uh, I'm hoping I get in on the Goose Kit as well, that is something on my to-do list. <clears throat> Stop stealing other people's ideas, Jay. This is not the first board to have a hard case, Gouty, so don't even think that. Um, there we go. So yeah, so uh, for anyone else who hasn't seen this, when you open this up, you basically get a really nice gift wrap package. You get a PCB and some stabilizers and some other bits in the top, some hardware. Then in the base, you get the keyboard case. Now, this reminds me very much of my Switch case, uh, my Nintendo Switch case. It's all kind of wrapped up in the same way. So I don't, I don't know if that's what these were originally designed for, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. I'm going to take the board out of here. take everything else out of here as well that we possibly need. So we've got the PCB, some stabilizers, got some hardware, 
We've got two long rubber strips which we use as the bases for the board. There we go. <coughs> Didn't like the J01 layout, but the O2 is perfect. Oh, well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, the prototype's here. Uh, I'd be interested to know what people think of the J02 when it comes out and whether they're going to buy a black or uh, a brass or a grey and brass one or if they want the LE as well because I'm really excited about next month. Nervous but excited at the same time. <coughs> Old keyboards come in a cardboard box, so yeah. <laughs> um. Really classy for the price, thank you. What is your best combination of keycaps for the JO2? So, I like a couple of things. So you can see here I've got, this is GMK 9s on the, <clears throat> so I've only got the uh, the, the, the grey top, so this is the space grey that we've come up with, and it's taken me a while to get this right with the manufacturer. We had 11 samples to get this colour right. It's not too light that it washes out the brass, and bear in mind it's underneath the bright streamlights here, so it does look a little bit dark right in real life. It's probably closer to the colour you can see now. Um, so nines looks really good on this, and the grey is dark enough that it doesn't wash the brass out, but it's light enough that it still looks like a space grey, otherwise it would just look like the grey number two that we had up here as well before. Now I don't have the grey base at the minute, I've got the black base, so please ignore that, that's how this looks. But yeah, there we go. I like nines on both the black top and the grey top, and for the white LE, I'm thinking Olivia and Cafe, because uh, I'll get one of each board in the group buy, so there we go. Yeah, we took 11 samples to get it right, so it was a bit of backwards and forwards between me and the manufacturer. We didn't make 11 tops, but I had 11 different pieces of, it's kind of like a, a thin piece of aluminium card type stuff. Um, and we went back through 11 different samples until the colour was just perfect. Quite expensive, but it was worth it. Uh, the new Zambu, the yellow and black, would be killer with that pen brass line. Yes, so GMK looks would look really, really good. It does look really weird with a black base, yes it does, um, but it's just because I wanted to get the colour right, I wanted to have a wing keyless top, so I just got both together, but you're right, the black is really black though on this, as you can see, it's a really, really dark black, um, again, it's a it's the darkest Pantone that they can actually match at the factory, um, of course, you'd have the space grey or the black, you wouldn't mix and match like I've done here, it's just... Just one of those things, and of course, as always, the pen rail is mag, mount mag mounted. If I can get this out, there we go. So it's just held in place by magnets. So the brass, of course, copper on the limited edition. There we go. <coughs> so there we go, guys. First of February or eighth of February, if you want the standard edition. Looking forward to that. Okay, but back to the NK65. So as we talked about the other day, and I did show this on stream, um, it's kind of like a three-piece construction. You've got a plate, which is top-mounted. So you can see there in the corners that this is top-mounted. There we go. Nice and easily. The other thing we've got then is it's an actually bottom mount, so you can see that it's got these holes such as this one here. This is where, and just over here as well, this is where they bottom mount onto the case. So you put it onto the bottom case and then you screw it down and that holds it all nice and tightly together. So there's the bottom case, there's a couple of things on here that I just want to point to your attention. There's these screw mounts here, so these are the mounts where they screw into. And then there's also these, come on camera focus, camera please. And then there's also these uh, these nubbins here as well. And what these are for is these are to just keep the PCB raised and they press, put pressure on the PCB. So it's gonna be a very, very firm build board. So we'll see how that goes. Just looking at the base, you can see it's got the Novel Keys logo etched into it just there. Come on camera, focus please. There we go. Got the Novel Keys logo there and you can see that these two long strips here, that's where the rubber feet are gonna go. So in terms of the board itself, it is hot swap. The first thing we're going to do is pop the feet on the base. Jonix says he prefers black. Space grey, did someone say apple? <laughs> uh, and those colours are so hard to get right. Yeah, it takes a long time to get them right. Um, uh, so, so Leandro, the one I'm really, really a big fan of is yours, Aquamarine. I would absolutely love to uh, to talk to you about being able to use that colour for an upcoming project so uh, we'll see how that goes okay so I'm just gonna try and put these in place okay there we go okay these are a slight bit longer than the gap to put them in actually let me just try that 
again, just a tiny bit longer than I was expecting it to be. Okay, there we go. It's nicely in place. Do the next one. The R1 grey is probably the most pog colour IMO. Nice. Does it look like Rama Free? Yeah, Aquamarine, yeah. Oh, it's Ultramarine. Okay, yeah, sorry, apologies, yeah. Aquamarine is what it should have been called. Ultramarine is what it's actually called. Right, okay. Yeah, I really like that colour. It is absolutely stunning. So, I might be in touch to see if I can steal the Pantone for it and uh, see if you're up for me using it for another project. Something that doesn't involve brass pen rails, actually. Okay, there we go, guys. That's the feet nicely installed. Everything's looking good there. <coughs> Oh no, what's wrong Wiz? You're saying, oh no. Okay, so that's all nicely put together from that perspective. We'll then take a look at the PCB. Would I recommend buying from Kono store in the UK? I'd recommend trying to go for one of the other proxies first if you can. So usually my keyboard.eu proxy things uh, in the EU for Kono.store. So I would always try and look at those if possible. Okay, now I am going to do this build completely stock for Demon. I'm going to let him do it, looping his own stabilizers and everything else. We're just going to literally put them together and put them into the board. <clears throat> and this is where I start to realize that I haven't built with plate mount stabilizers in a long, long time. these together as I say no lube or anything on these we're just building it nice and stock for uh, for demon so he can go and uh, rebuild the board to his uh, his desires okay it's looking all good from that perspective Help if I put it in the right way okay we'll do that in a second I'll take the plate out and we'll do it in a second I can't see what I'm Quite what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, we need stabilizers here for backspace, for the ANSI enter, for the space bar, and then for the uh, the left shift as well. Nice touch that the kit comes with these included. I'm just literally pushing these together right now. Uh, a heat treated titanium pen rail will go nicely with Midnight Rainbow. Yeah, so uh, the the titanium and Damascus and stuff like that for the pen rail is stuff that I've talked about with um, Salvin. It might be something that we do, but it won't be for the JO2. Just because of the size of it, it might be a little bit expensive. But Midnight Rainbow is coming around June this year. Uh, so I have a slot with Mike in June and my keyboard will be selling GMK Midnight Rainbow. Uh, you heard it here first, folks. June. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So I don't think the PCB supports screens. The PCB does not support screen stabilizers, no. So as you can see, guys, it does have in-switch LED. It is designed by Yankar, but there is no stabilizer pins on the PCB. It's just the switches and everything else is um, uh, plate mount. Uh, yeah, Jim K. Handbike Nights, yeah, it launched the IC a couple of days after I launched the Midnight Rainbow one. I think it was like three or four days different. So it's just one of those things, sadly. Handabite Nights is, um, <laughs> well, it's just, it's just a night version of Handabite, right? That's it. Uh, so the NK65 Junkie Rendered, so this is already given away, sorry, when I've said giveaway, I meant it's the giveaway board that we gave away before Christmas. There's no giveaway today, sorry, I do apologise if that came across wrongly in my wording. 
<clears throat> so this is actually the one that we gave away and we're building. Now I can't remember the last time I used plate mount stabilizers. I really, really can't. So forgive me, but this is going to be a bit of a Jay works out live on stream. Okay, so that's going to sit like so. When do you think Midnight Rainbow will release? June. So June is when the uh, the group buy is going to run. So uh, so I'm slightly confused as to how these click into here. Um, do I put them up the other way? Is that how these go in? You can tell it's a long time since I've used these guys. Is that how these clip up? From the bottom up? Yeah. Slightly from the top. Hmm. Well, we'll come back to that one in a second. That's gone under the desk. <laughs> Come back to that one in a second. So they're going from the top. Okay, so maybe I just need to be a little bit more brutal with these. Are you sure these going from the top? You have to go in from one side and push. You can put them in last. Easy when built. Wire below. Oh, wait, the wire goes below. Interesting. Are you sure the wire goes below? Slide the wire under the plate and then click into play. Right, okay, cool. So I'll just slow down, guys. Slow down. You put the wire in first. That's how the master one. Slide the wire under the plate and then click into place. So do these go in this way? I'm really confused, guys. <laughs> I'm really. F wire goes below. Okay, go wire sides in. Go wire side in with the notches in place and then click in. Right, guys, come on. Show me how this is. Show me how this is. Yeah, I, I. It must be seven or eight years since I last built with these guys. I can't recall how these go in. I could have sworn that they just dropped down like this. So I could have sworn that you just pushed it in like this. So let me show you. So like this, and then you took it, and you took it under, and then you pushed it down, right? This proves the plate mount to inferior. Put the stabs together. Okay, 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 right. Let me get a stab put together. <clears throat> Am I gonna have to Google this? Go on, Tronics, you tell me. They're going built. Right, it's in. It's in. I'm going to just Google it now. On an angle, slide in and snap down. The wire goes under the plate. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yes, I remember that. As soon as, as, soon as you said that, Gia, on an angle, slide in and snap down, I completely remembered exactly how they went. So for those of you who don't know what you do, and I'm sure everyone does apart from me, in fact, I'll show you on the uh, the shift key because it's a little bit more visible. So what you do is you take the stabilizer, like so, and this front edge here that's got the wire in, you tuck it underneath two little clips. So you can see there that the wire goes underneath. And then what you do is you just push down until it clips in. And then the same on the other side. Well, I think I've got that one stuck. There we go. Okay, so that one's slightly wrong. Mm -hmm. 
We will get this build done eventually, guys. This was supposed to be the easy part of the stream. Okay, so that one wasn't in either. Give me one second, guys, to just find the bits that have gone on the floor. Note to self, don't build anything with plate mount stabs for people in the future. <laughs> you don't have any uh, option but support to put uh, to put plate mount in, to be honest. That's the only option you have here. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck the front end underneath down there we go just lost one insert so I'm just gonna grab another insert it's easier than finding the one that's on the floor okay okay why design a board that doesn't support uh, Clippings. Well, I think it just depends on the designer's purpose, you know, and what, what they're trying to do with the board. Uh, some people don't like PCB mount stabilizers. I can't remember the last time I used clippings. It's probably four or five years since. <clears throat> Maybe even longer. I think it's actually probably closer to seven or eight years since I last used clippings. There we go. All nice and easy. Next thing we're going to do, guys, is put a couple of switches in, and we're going to put the PCB into position, and then we'll go from there. Might be able to use screwing with a new PCB and plate, though. Yes, absolutely. You could do a uh, a different version that was uh, screwing. That's absolutely possible. I'm just checking the switch orientations here as well, just in the corners, just before I put anything in. Just making sure that they're going the right way around. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to take the PCB and we're just going to push this into place now. We're just going to make sure that all lines up correctly. Those are all in place, and then what we're going to do is pop a couple in the middle. So I'm just going to clip these into the plate, not push them all the way into the board just yet. Push them into the plate, and then we're going to flip it over and then push them in nice and firmly so everything's sat together. That's going to pull the PCB up to the plate a little bit more, and then as we put more and more switches in place, we'll be able to uh, just got a bent pin on this one. I'm going to change that switch out. We'll be able to start clipping them in a little bit easier. Again, no soldering required here. This is just dead easy plug and play. You just push it together and everything is good and right with the world. <clears throat> Are you sure the PCB doesn't screw to the plate? 100% uh, positive the PCB does not screw to the plate. The plate screws to the base. So you can see that these mount points here, so there's one just there that goes all the way through, you can see my finger going behind, and it goes into this post here on the base. So there's five posts on the base and those all screw together. It does screw to the plate, what? Oh, from the underside, sorry, yes, but it doesn't, I didn't realise we needed to do that first. Again, okay, learning experience. Good spot then guys, I thought it just screwed down. It's two skulls. Okay, interesting. After swapping a few times, your screws will get looser. Y um, yes. Okay, so it's held in place at two points here. Let me just uh, move that to one side. I am 100% positive that I brought up my screwdriver set, but I can't see it. Interesting. Okay. Okay, let's screw that down. Nice. 
screw the other side down. This will give it a little bit more stability when we're pushing the switches in as well. You can tell I build these budget boards often. Okay, so that should make putting the rest of these switches in a little bit easier. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. The two Phillips screws, yeah, I've got them. What are these other screws then? Are these not Phillips? They're Torx, interesting. So the other screws are Torx. Very interesting. I will need to grab my screwdrivers for that then. Oh, it's there. That's where it is. And you brought it up. It's here, look. You can tell me being ill is going to my head a little bit. Shouldn't you put the switches in after you've put together the case? No, that's fine, I think, doing it this way. I can still put the screws in between the switches. That should be okay. What was, how much was this board priced at? Was this $140? Is that what this cost? Something in that sort of price range, I think. Joe, you, I think you know you bought one. I was uh, gifted this one, so I can't recall. $140, yeah, $140. I'm sure it was that. Put it together, it's even easier. There's nubs on the case to hold it down when you push. Yeah, it should be fine. Should be fine just like this, but I know what you mean. These nubbins will hold the PCB up if I do that. Yep, my wife's blending juices, I can hear her in the background. Apologize if that's distracting you guys. She's uh, been at the gym all day while I've been at home lubing switches and feeling sorry for myself. We can't hear it at all. All right, okay. Well, it is happening, I promise you guys, it's happening. It's quite loud, I can hear it. Usually this mic picks up when the birds are chirping outside in the morning, so I'm surprised you guys can't hear that. Well, these aren't lubed, aren't these particular ones. These are completely stock switches of these ones. And then you guys need to uh, guess the key set I'm going to use. I don't think I put the key set in the build command, but I am going to use a key set today that I haven't actually used on a board that I've typed on yet, apart from once on a build stream, I think. I don't think I mounted the keycaps, actually. Mizu. Yeah, it's Mizu. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Did I already say that? Did I put it in the command? Okay, yeah. I didn't think I had put it in the command. Usually I don't. But yeah, I'm using Mizu for this. I'm not looking forward to work tomorrow, I've got to be honest. It's going to be a long old day and a long old slog. And as well, the fact that I have to be at the post office at 6am in the morning is also going to be a pain too. Is Salvin based in Europe? Yes, Salvin is based in Europe. He lives in Belgium, not too far away from me. Why do I have to be at the post office at 6am? So, I was shipping the 
uh, Rest of the World IDB 60s uh, on Saturday morning. And the contract I have for Business Post, which we're with Royal Mail here in the UK, states that if I've got more than 10 packages, I can't go to a post office. I have to go to the drop off centre, which is like a depot. And that's where all of the post office send their mail as well. Fine, not a problem with that. It's 40 minutes away. So I took a drive down there with, I think, 70 parcels or something like that in the car. I got there and they said, you can't drop those off today. I was like, why not? Basically, they said they didn't have the space, so they've got a warehouse which is something somewhere in the region of the size of an American football field, and apparently they can't accept 60 to 70 packages which fit in my car. So they said the only way you can ship these packages is to come back on Monday. Now, the big thing when I buy postage for Royal Mail is I bought it all post the postage for every single board on Saturday morning and the intention was to drop them off and it'd be fine. But when you buy the postage, you've only got 48 hours from the minute you buy the postage to drop them off. So because I bought them on Saturday, 48 hours away from Saturday morning is Monday morning. And that means I've got to drop them off before I go do my day job. And I have to drop them off before 11 a.m. anyway, because that's the last time I bought a ticket on the day previous uh, on the Saturday. So yeah, I was not happy when they turned me away. But it is what it is, I will go tomorrow morning before work and they will accept them and that's that's all there is to it Tas Stylo says what industry do you work in so in my day job I actually work uh, in banking but more in software than uh, in development than anything else yeah so the bill for Royal Mail shipping for all of those boards was not cheap uh, I'm not going to say the amount because that's unfair, but uh, Pingo knows how much it was and he will tell you it was not a cheap amount. So for them to turn me away after I spent all of that money was uh, very disappointing to say the least. Okay. It's nice that these are Torx screws though, I've got to be honest. I do like Torx and I prefer Torx to any other type of screw. Uh, mainly because you can put more torque on it and you can make sure it's tighter, which works great for metal parts. Uh, but uh, it, so it isn't really, really nice to see that these are Torx. I'll call the Queen and ask her to fix it. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows the Queen here in the UK. There's two spare screws left over, I'll put them in this little bag. There we go guys, that's the board put together. We should probably do a test, make sure everything's working okay. It's USB-C, so I can steal this cable here. Okay, ooh, there we go, nice and bright. Let's bring up switch hitter so you guys can see what works and what doesn't. That's me doing something earlier on. So let's go through the keys, see what lights up, see what doesn't. Oh, bent pin probably there. Okay, two so far that don't work. So I've got this one here and I've got one on the middle row. Let's just go through the rest of the keys, see if we've got anything else. T doesn't. What's probably happened is I've probably just bent the pins that have been putting them in. It's not columns or anything else, it doesn't seem. Well, maybe it is. No, we're alright. It's just a couple of bent pins. They're easy to fix. I think that's FN. Is it FN? Yes, yeah, so that's FN, so that is working. Okay, so that means we've got uh, DX TG. So we'll just quickly flick these out and put them back in. And yeah, as suspected bent pins, we've got plenty of switches, so rather than unbend the pins, I'll just change these out. Beauty of having a hot swap board. There we go. And then got the X key. FN, yes. Witzel is here saying what's up. So, which macro pad is that with all the Kippurs? That is uh, the Ocelot. 
Uh, I can show you that in a second, guys. But it's the Ocelot Macapan. It's a little bit dusty, so I do apologise. This is my Ocelot with just a couple of my favourite Kapoor's on. Stash Builds Boards, thank you very much. Raiding with Party of Five, thank you. Welcome to the stream, guys. We're just doing a little bit of troubleshooting on this board, just taking out some switches that uh, have got bent pins. It's a hot swap build. Oh, interesting. That one wasn't bent. That one did not have a bent pin. So, we need to take the board apart and look at the G. Oops. So we'll do that afterwards. It looks like it's potentially uh, just needs a little bit of solder reflowing on there. T works, and then I think we've just got the nine key. Evening, Existential, existentially yours is there. Started with a J score. Yeah, we finished off the number two from last week and started with a J score. Okay, there. So we've just got the G key, which doesn't work, and that's because I think that the pad on the inside is broken. So let's uh, take the board back apart. Let's take a look at the pad and then let's reflow it if needed. Let's make sure this all works before we ship it out. What's up, Jay? Hope the build is going well. Absolutely, yeah. This is dead easy at this point. This is just a, a hot swap board. First time I've used plate mount stabilizers in seven or eight years, so uh, that was a struggle because I couldn't remember how they went together. It needed some careful help from Tronix and uh, Geo to help me get there. But uh, we did look at the number two earlier on. Did two builds for a number two. One was with, uh, that's key cut number two, not another type of number two. Uh, was one with uh, uh, MX Clears, and then we did another one with um, Getter on Inks. Okay, so the G key isn't working. Uh, ASDFG, okay. I don't know how easy it's going to be for you guys to see this but I think it's because of the diode. So if you guys look just here, the diode that's just off the tip of my finger, it looks like the pad on this side of it, D26, just there, isn't soldered. So I think that might be the issue. Failing that, we'll reflow the other bits as well. So I'll just grab my soldering iron. A dab of solder. I've changed the, the uh, I had a couple of switches in there, the first one that came out wasn't bent, put a different key in, a switch in it, still didn't work, so yeah. Definitely tried that. Top right, Jay, you had one as well. Uh, oh yes, let's have a look at that in a second, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> um, ASDFG D26, okay. Just gonna quickly drop a tiny, tiny bit of solder to this side here. Whilst I'm here, I'm just gonna reflow. On both sides as well, just make sure that if there is anything in terms of the switch, we've got it covered. Let's just try that, see if that has fixed it. So, A, S, D, F, G, there we go, all fixed. You're right, Gio, we did have one down this side that wasn't working, it's this one just here. So we'll pop this back on here, we'll take that switch out. See if this is a bent pin. I think this is a bent pin just from how the switch is set. Yeah. Dead easy. Page up. There we go. All now working great. Perfect. Pop this back together. We'll pop some keycaps on the board and then we'll do a little sound test. And then we'll close down the stream, but looking forward to it. 
<clears throat> Hot swap so easy. Don't have to desolder. <laughs> Don't have to do any soldering yet. I think it was a diode, if I'm honest. Whatever happened to the uh, the board you were designing with? Because I know you were doing a couple of interesting things. I don't know how much is public, so I won't say what the board looked like or anything. But I was very interested in that, and it seemed to go all quiet on that front. So I'm interested to know where you got to with your design. Okay. You, I'm sure you were designing something. Um, which board? That's because you've got multiple projects. Yeah, it wasn't a full size. I think it was smaller than a 60 if I remember rightly. Okay, so there we go guys, that's everything all working now. So we'll pop some keycaps on there, I'm going to unplug the board while we do so. We are going to go with GMK Mizu, as I said before. Then we'll do a really quick sound test at the end of the stream. Uh, and then we'll close down the stream and go from there. No, this isn't, um, maybe, maybe, Wiz, as we talk about so many different boards on Top Clack that I forget about half of them because there's just so many different boards now, uh, and we talk about so many different group buys, I can never remember them all. But no, there was something you were working on, I'm sure it was like an ergo thing, like a couple of years ago, before I was on Top Clack when I was doing my own streams, so it's probably 18 months ago now, um, and I'm sure it was something ergo related that you were doing. I don't know if I just missed a group buy for something like that, or... I'm not calling these boards forgettable. I'm not calling anyone's boards forgettable. It's just talk about so damn many boards these days. It's easy to forget certain things. Uh, and my memory's not great for that kind of stuff. And I'm poorly, so... Yeah. Back of the pipeline. Oh, okay. That's fair. Okay, let's uh, get these keycaps put on. And sorry Demon, the keycaps don't come with the board. I know you've won the board and this will get shipped to you, but you don't get the keycaps as well, I'm afraid. <laughs> now, I, you see, you just posted that just as I was saying that. There we go. I'm going to do a 60 and a TKL next. Well, 60 I will definitely be interested in. TKL, more than likely not. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if you're doing a, a 60 Wiz, I'm definitely interested in seeing what that looks like. Man, I'd forgotten how they felt. <laughs> so just remember guys, when we do the typing test on this one, there is no lube on the stabilizers, there's no lube on the switches, that's because it's a, a build for Demon. I just wanted to uh, to just get it put together for him and ship it as one nice package. Uh, Demon, I'll also chuck a uh, few spare switches in for you as well. I'll chuck a handful of spare switches in just in case you need any extras too. Rattly plate. Uh, it's not the plate, it's the fact that these are plate mount stabilizers. But as I say, this is completely unlubed. Switches are not lubed, stabilizers are not lubed. We've literally just built it. I'm going to book the trend here if, the, if it's got it. I'm going to build this with the mod colored key there. I know some of you dislike that, uh, but that's how I'm going to do it. Mizu and black looking surprisingly hot. Well, that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this um, classic because I tried it on my black JO2 a couple of days ago and I was really, really surprised by how good it looked. So I thought I'd do it on a black board today. Unlubed. Don't sound like that lubed. No, they don't. Should have lubed stabs. Bad time to unsub. <laughs> It's because I spent so long building boards today, guys. I had to build that number two off stream today for Mike. because so I built a whole board, lubing all the switches this morning, whilst I didn't feel well. And then I'd already agreed with Demon that we wouldn't touch the board anything too far. We'd just put it together uh, and see how it was from a build perspective and everything else. And it's up to you guys if you want to take this through the J-score as well or not. We don't have to do this through the J-score. We can do if you want to. I'm completely ambivalent. Um, it's entirely up to you guys. Kind of wish I picked up Mizu, it looks super nice on the Graphite i 165 when you finally get it. Uh, it would do, or or even a, a JO2 if you buy one of those. <laughs> you, 
Yes, for J score, says Janky Render. Okay, we can do a J score. If we get three people asking for a J score, we'll do it. We've got one so far. Jay, check my previous message. Okay. The 6% prototype is on its way to the States as we are speaking and have a dead encryption stream of build and would love Brian to have a touch too. But you know how it is with those designers. I already have new prototypes coming. I know exactly how you feel, man. Uh, if I can ever do anything for you here in the EU, you just let me know because I was always a fan of your work. It, it, that, exactly. J score with a new switches might kind of put us in the same situation as the number two. It may well do, so that's why I'm leaving it up to you guys to decide. Was there no ETF today? No, I haven't seen an ETF I forgot. There'll be big hate. <laughs> LMAO. Probably so, yeah, probably so. It's probably not fair to J score, absolutely. Alright, wrong one. Wrong one. Uh, if I remember rightly, that was end. I do have an end key for it. There it is. Okay. Oh, do you know what we should do for this? We should go with the white arrows, I think. That might look quite nice. Let's have a look, see how it looks with the white arrows. <clears throat> will you ever have an NK65 against the J-Score for one? Yes, I will. Um, so, I will be getting one in the extras myself, personally. Um, so yeah, I will have one later on at some point to do. Uh, believe what you want, my friend. I got my invoice 19 hours ago. If you got it today, it was a re-raffle. Fair enough. What do you think to the white arrows, guys? Do you think that looks good? This is where you'll tell me to change the escape key for the white key as well. Looking hot. Yeah, surprising good board. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really surprised by how nice this board is for the money, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's bargain price. Oh, rat. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't feel right to not fix that. It doesn't feel right to leave it as it is. <laughs> Change the escape. And that's why we lube. Yeah. So, guys, that's why we lube. Well, I'll get another board that's been lubed in a second and uh, I'll show you guys. Okay, there we go. That's the keycaps on. I'm not changing the escape key. There's a mouse trapped under there. No J-score. Yeah, yeah, that decided it. We're not J-scoring it because it wouldn't be fair. Uh, I wouldn't want to detract from Mike's hard work and Yankai's hard work on this particular board. Okay. One thing I do wish that was different in life is GMK trays. I wish these were better to use. Please fix on no typing test. No J score now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do a proper full on typing test, don't worry. <laughs> I'll do a typing test of just the alphas. <laughs> let's uh, let's use it as a demonstration as to why we leave as classy suggested though. Okay. So let's just listen to the alphas. So these are silent switches. Let's mute the music. These are silent switches. That's actually not too bad. Those sound all right. I think. I think if the stabs were lubed, I think they'd sound okay. Oh, listen to this. Oh yeah, that's what it's about. Let's just uh, bear in mind that this doesn't get used as a daily driver board, so and it hasn't been lubed since I first did it, but. That's why we lube, guys. So 
there we go there we go there's a bit of sound delay yeah there is a tiny tiny bit of sound delay yes yeah. so it's just because this camera above has to go through a capture card there's a tiny bit of sound delay um, and there's a tiny little bit of video delay as well if you if you watch if I do something like this uh, you will see that there's a tiny bit of video delay the focus is hold on so you a tiny bit of video delay as well. Uh, it's just because this camera has to go through additional processing, that's all. The J01 Kipura, yes, it's a, it's a rare boy, is that J01 Kipura? Uh, but there you go, guys. So this is the NK65. Um, I think, actually, this looks great for a little... I'm not going to lube the stabs, no. Because this is... Um, so it so literally didn't lube the stabs at all. So this is a giveaway board. I gave this away on the stream just before Christmas. Demon, uh, who is in chat is the now the owner of this board and I said that I would donate him some switches and we'd just get it on the stream to put it together just to show people how it looks and, and how it goes together and stuff like that more than anything else but I'll leave the actual build up to him so he's going to lube the stabilizers, he's going to put the right switches in, he's going to lube his switches all of that kind of stuff, this is just so I can ship it as a nice neat package, but to be honest for $140 I'd be pretty damn happy with this look at that I'd be pretty damn happy with it and how good does Mizu look on there? Like, Mizu, blue and black shouldn't work together, but for some reason, it does. Blue and black, usually, like dark blue and black, doesn't usually work together. Here it looks great. So there we go. NK65, the gateway drug of keeps. Absolutely. So, Demon, I've got you... Uh, I've got your um, address and everything else. I will get this board sent out to you. It's going to be next Saturday before I post it. I'm going to the post office in the morning, but it's not the actual post office. It's the drop-off post office, so it won't be tomorrow. It will be next Saturday when I post it, uh, along with a few other bits and pieces as well. The steel IDBs are going next Saturday too. But I will get it out to you as fast as I can. Um, I think you're in the EU as well, so you get it there pretty close. This would make a great work or travel board to It's light. Should we weigh it actually, guys? Because you've probably not seen the weight of it either. So let me just grab my scales again. Sounds better than the key call. Oof, talisman. Oof. So in grams, this weighs 1.3 kilograms. That's not too bad. And in pounds and ounces, that's two pounds, uh, one, uh, 15 ounces. So it's a lot less than the key call. Uh, it's pretty much on par with the, uh, the E6.5. I think that's even lighter, actually. So, yeah, but there we go, guys. There we go. That's the uh, NK65. I'm really, really impressed with that board. I'm going to make sure that I use mine for my travel board. I just wish it was ISO. Uh, Foobox says five months of so thank you very much man thank you let's give you a big heart emote for that thank you do it this way big heart uh, this is the alu one isn't it yes this is aluminium yeah it's fully aluminium <clears throat> at least on stream right now I think it does I yeah the alphas don't sound bad on this it does sound a little bit hollowed as a case but it doesn't sound bad at all it doesn't sound bad at all uh, no rush, thanks a lot for this Jay. Demon, not a problem at all man, well done on winning the board, I'm really happy it's going to win as guy as nice as you. Um, I'll get it put back in its pouch, you won't get the keycaps sadly. <laughs> um, I might have some keycaps I can throw at you. Um, let me have a look at my drawer, let me have a look in my spare parts drawer, let me see if I've got something that would go with this board nicely. Uh, okay, hold on, I found a little box, let's see what this is. I found a box. Whatever's in this box, you can have. Okay, I found a box. Hi how jukebox. Cubic. It's on that box. It's not as on that box. There you go. There you go. Tai how cubic. Uh, in jukebox. I'll shove that in the box as well for you. You can have that as well, man. There you go. Why the hell not? Oh, Zondat, yeah. So the reason this says Zondat on it is because I took a key set to it in him for a meetup ages and ages ago. So he borrowed a key set for a meetup because he didn't have a spare key set for his board. I think to wind him up, I actually took two. Uh, he asked to borrow 9009 or something else like that, or muted. So I actually took him. Uh, 
uh, SA Trouble Minds, <laughs> and I gave him it to in this box first. I gave him SA Trouble Minds for a 60% board or a 65%. I think it was when the Noxia 268 originally came out, um, and you should have seen his face when I gave him the, the, the this box with uh, SA Trouble Minds in. It was all purple and green, and his face just dropped. He was like, I wanted something that was like muted on 9009, and like I'd got the other key set with me. It was just yeah, it was just one of those things. Um, I do this a lot, actually. I do this a lot. So, Tobbles, Toby, uh, you guys might know Toby as well. He got one at one point. So, yeah. But yeah, we'll shove that in the box. Demon has as well. Um, so this actually is, is was something that was given to us uh, and donated to me by someone else in the UK. Uh, I won't show his name because he has to be anonymous uh, to do for giveaways and things like that. Uh, and we actually ran a Secret Santa here in the UK, and he donated a few different bits and pieces and said, if anyone doesn't get a Secret Santa present, gift them this stuff away. So luckily, everything was all right from that perspective. But yeah, this is gonna come your way, Demon Hearts, as well. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Why are you trying to give uh, yikes to a poor soul? Uh, you got Taiho Jerk Box you box suit. Yeah, so as I was saying, it was not actually mine. It was it was given to me as with a few other bits and pieces, which I know I've got in there. There's like five key sets overall, and someone donated them just in case anyone didn't get something in the Secret Santa, or if there's another giveaway that we can do to help someone out, that kind of stuff. So there's a few different more bits and pieces, and as I say, they might go to the next couple of meetups in the UK as well. Uh, what PCB did I use for my Sirius? I think I used one of the uh, standard GH60s, if I remember rightly. You can go back and look on the build stream though, because it was uh, done a while back. Lube Helios, no, it's uh, it's Cubic Jukebox. So there we go, Cubic Jukebox. <laughs> Jason's of humour intact despite the cold. Yeah, I, I like to play practical jokes on people that aren't painful or going to hurt or things like that. <laughs> Why are you trying to give a yikes to a poor soul? The most yike thinks on the yikes thing on the cool board. What's the cool board? Sorry, I'm not not up to speed on that. <clears throat> um, but if, if you've linked to what the cool board is, I'll take a look at. Oh, is this um, Huey's cool board? Is that what you're on about? It was was Ty Howe jukebox on Huey's uh, cool board. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, Huey's videos. Okay, right. I haven't watched any for a long time, so I haven't seen the Ty Howe cubic set get put up there. Uh, Cubic is actually a pretty good profile and the legends are great from a Taihao perspective. So one of the things I'm really impressed with actually is Taihao's double shotting. Let me let me just show you something guys. And I'm conscious that the streams are running here a little bit. But one thing that Taihao does really, really well is actually double shotting keycaps. And they're probably actually a little bit better at it than GMK. Let me uh, let me get two keys that match these to show you. Now whilst I disagree on it from their legend perspective, which <laughs> Things like flying off the back of the desk there. Uh, whilst uh, I'm not necessarily a big fan of their legends, what I am really a fan of is the way they do double shot. So as you can see here, this is the legend on the keycap. Uh, and this is the legend on a GMK keycap, so I'll hold them next to you. So I think the legends on the GMK are better, they're crisper, they're neater. But the way that GMK do double shotting is actually kind of messy on the inside. So you can see that some places there's bits of blue showing, it's not exactly kind of neat, uh, and you can see sometimes there's a lot of bleed, so if you look down on this edge there's a lot of bleed from the blue coming through the white and things like that, and the lines are different thicknesses. But how neat are these ones? Look at those little pins on the inside that work to hold it in place. Look at that one. Those little pins on the inside that hold the double shotting in place. I think that these are arguably the, the methodology they use to uh, to pin these into place from a double shot perspective is probably arguably better, even though the quality is not as high on the keycaps. But that's just a, a, a methodology thing, I think. Cool board is huge one, yeah. I've not seen it for a long time. I think the jukebox is the most yikes thing on this cool board. Um, I'm not actually sure, I haven't seen it for a long time. I, I do watch Huey's content a fair bit. I usually watch his Week in Review, but I haven't seen his, uh, <laughs> for obviously the end his exit, but I haven't seen his Cool Wall for a while, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's on there. Yeah, so the JTK triple shot is actually pretty well done as well. From a double shotting, or from a triple shotting perspective, you're right, but the actual legend quality isn't great, yeah. New mold processing, absolutely anarchy, yeah, it is a new mold processing, but it works well and it looks great and it, it looks like it's done properly as well. 
Um, yeah, if JTK can get triple shots looking great all the time, and they can actually match what their legends look like on their double shot sets, I'd be very impressed, and I would be more tempted to pick them up. I have got some triple shots somewhere, but they're not easy to get to at the minute. Um, so yeah, not gonna lie, I like Cubic Duke. I like Cubic as a profile. I've got the white and black set for uh, the yeah the black on white set from Mike somewhere, and it's a great set for for all, in all honesty, it worked really really well. So yeah. Okay guys, we're going to close down the stream in the next couple of minutes. It's been going for two hours and about five minutes now. Um, but we have built the number two. We have done a sound test. We've J-scored the number two. We've built the NK65. We've taught me or retaught me how to do uh, um, uh, plate mount stabilizers. And um, we've got the whole board working. We've sold it on the G because the G wasn't working. And we've added a key set, keep cap set to the giveaway originally. So there we go. Um, if you've got any questions guys, now is the time to ask them. We'll be closing down in a minute. Thanks for the stream, Jay. Get better soon. I feel better just from speaking to you guys and being able to stream and stuff like that. It means a lot to me when I can do this and share time with you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm hopefully, uh, I'll hopefully I'll be back better for Thursday when we've got the next show. Um, and then build stream next week may or may not happen. I've got a very busy weekend. If it doesn't happen next weekend, then it will be the weekend after. And don't forget, guys, that's when the IDBs uh, will be going live as well. The IDB extras will be going live on Sunday the 26th of, uh, of uh, January. Yeah, 26th of January. That's when the IDB extras will be going live. Uh, and the JO2, if you guys are interested in it, I'm trying not to chill myself too much. I won't say about what's on the store or anything like that, because that's not fair. But the JO2 group buy does start on the 1st with the limited edition version, 1st of Feb. And then on the 8th of Feb, that's when the standard edition version uh, opens up as well. So if you are interested in that, guys, please, please do join. And uh, I'm really, really excited to share the JO2 with everyone, because the JO1 was so limited, and it was much more of a secular layout, I think uh, is a way of putting it, and much more uh, appreciative of 60s of the community. So I, I'm really really excited to share that with everyone but yeah right then guys thank you very much for your time i really appreciate you joining us thank you for all the bits thank you for all the subs thank you for all whatever you guys did today i really really appreciate it thank you for being absolute legends in chat and talking to me all the way through thank you very very much for participating in the j scores love doing that with you guys and uh, i'm going to call it a night now but thanks very much again and i'll see you again on thursday take care guys all the best <laughs>